Lord God, who is like you? No one is like you. And no one can touch my heart like you do. So I come before you with a grateful heart to worship you. So please join me in this song. Oh, there is none like you. There is none like you. And no one else can touch my heart like you do. And I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you Yes, there is none like you And no one else can touch my heart like you do And I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you your mercy flows like a river wide and healing comes from your hand suffering children are safe in your arms there is none like you God, there is none like you, and no one else can touch my heart like you do, and I could search for all eternity long, and find there is none like you, your mercy flows like a river wide and healing healing comes from your hand from you only oh God suffering children are safe in your arms there is none there is none like you oh there is none like you No one else can touch my heart like you do And I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you And I could search for all eternity long And find there is none like you Yes, I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you Not like you, God Hi there there is none like you, God. No one can touch my heart like you do. This is our song of worship. My reflection today is uh, we as worshippers of the living God. I've been a worship leader for, for many, many years and uh, worship is always um, something that I grow into, that I discover more and more. I'm never done with it. And I've seen that for all those years that uh, worship is an act. It's an act that we bring before God. We don't worship God to get something. We worship God for who he is. He's our creator. He's our savior. He is the one who forgives our sins. He has saved us. He has given us life. And this is why we worship him, we praise him, we give him glory. 
We express our thankfulness, our gratitude when we worship the Lord. And you know what? God does not need our worship, but he enjoys our worship. I can see him smiling. I can see him really rejoicing when I am worshiping him, when I'm praising him. And you know, worship is not a give and take game. It's like, well, if you give me this, I'll worship you. And all because I've received this, then um, my worship makes sense. Well, we worship God and we praise him in all circumstances. When we worship, we look up. So we lift our eyes up. And um, that gesture of lifting our eyes up is so that we can sort of get it off the things of this world. So we look to God. Our spiritual eyes are open to the things of God. I'm struck by some people in the Bible that chose worship, even in the worst times of struggle, of death. And one of them is Stephen. And in Acts, it says, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they convert their eyes and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. So that became serious, so they started to kill him. And while they were doing this, while they were stoning him, Steph, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he fell asleep. He died in that act of worship, forgiving those who were stoning him. And this is what our worship is about. Is when we lift our eyes to heaven, no matter what happens or what can happen, our trust is in the Lord and the outcome is his. So when you worship, look up. And God will take care of the other things. Lord, I thank you that as we worship you, as we praise you, that we may have our eyes fixed on you and that we can give you everything we've got in our praise and our worship. For you enjoy our worship. Amen.